If right now you're stumped as to whether you can use Gmail in the browser or whether you want to use Gmail in the browser and you haven't yet fully committed and made the switch, I've got a number of compelling reasons why you should do that. So how do folks make the commitment to use the native Gmail site without depending also on an external app on their laptop like Outlook or Mail? Now, I will openly admit I'm a Google purist and we wear the Google underpants. We do everything Google as much as possible because we live in the Google ecosystem and we want to show business owners how productive they can be and how you can read performance across your teams through fully committing to going all in on Google. But for some, I understand there's a big shift. If you're coming from Outlook or you're coming from MacMail, you may like some of the things that you're familiar with in those applications. Now, there's a whole raft of features inside of Outlook like flagging and you know different ways of giving yourself reminders that are centric to Outlook that don't always translate exactly over to Gmail. And I completely understand that. Google's got a pretty good system of tags, which are called labels. And also being able to star emails obviously gives you the ability to follow up snoozing emails to come back to them in the future work great inside of Gmail, but it's not quite the productivity system that Outlook is trying to be. Mac Mail, on the other hand, you're probably most familiar with being able to store all of your emails online and seeing a consolidated inbox with lots of different mailboxes where if you've got a business with multiple brands or you want to keep tabs on multiple mailboxes, well, you can see them all in one place in Mac Mail. Now, that's not something that you can replicate exactly in Google. If you want to forward multiple inboxes to one place, you can do that with Google. But if you literally have different accounts across different businesses, or you have multiple mailboxes that you want other staff to manage, well, you're going to have to open those in different tabs inside the Google interface. So they're the things that people usually find a challenge. And my job previously was to train each one of our customers as we migrated them from either Microsoft or Mac Mail over into the Google world. Now, after thousands of customers and literally tens of thousands of users migrated to Gmail over 15 years of our business, thankfully, I'm no longer flying around the country having to do that one by one teaching people in their boardrooms. But I did learn a thing or two about how you can make the Google experience great. And hopefully that'll help you to forget what the experience was like using Outlook or using Mac Mail. So let me show you a few of the highlights inside my Gmail. These are the things that I like to show people to get them excited about using Gmail every day. And that'll hopefully convince you to ditch Microsoft or ditch Mac Mail and help you move to exclusively using Gmail. I'm gonna go ahead and open up my Gmail here in the browser. Here we are in my inbox. All right, oh, we've got a lot to cover. This is exciting. Okay, the first thing for me to cover is that Google are very, very open to third-party apps, integrations, and plugins in their Gmail interface. You get the power of like basically an app store of third-party integrations that can help to enhance your Google experience. Now, one of my favorite ones I'm using right now is something called Inbox When Ready. And you would have noticed when I first opened my inbox, I couldn't actually see anything. This is a handy little plugin for Gmail that you add. And what it does is it lets you compose emails, search for emails, look through your labels if you want to look through your labels, organize emails, all without the distraction of new emails coming into your inbox. This is just one plugin of thousands of plugins that can make your Gmail better. The other great thing about Gmail is because now Google have added the ability to see your different apps on the side pane here, they're effectively bringing all of your Google ecosystem into the one place. And so you'll see here, I have my calendar on the right-hand side. I've got access to my contacts. I can even see my Google tasks if I wanna see my tasks. And so everything in my Google world is available with the click of a button. Okay, well, what about on the left-hand side? I can access my chat. And so any of my individual one-on-one -on -one chats with my team members are here. If I need to join a Google Meet, I can click one button and jump straight into a meeting. Okay, there's some of the basics of working with Google. But most people start to think, yeah, Peter, but that's all online, it's only in the browser. What if I wanna work offline? Well, Google have only a couple of years ago updated their offline access for Gmail to now allow up to 90 days of email to be stored in the browser. And it means that you can access Gmail pretty much everywhere you go and use up to the last 90 days of your history to compose, reply, or you know, send a new email to anyone that you want from the Google ecosystem. To switch that on, you head into your settings, you go to the settings menu, all settings, and then the offline tab. Now, if you don't currently see the offline tab in your business account, you may have to head over to your admin panel and switch on offline access for Gmail 
You can do that by searching for offline and looking for the Gmail settings. Offline, okay. So you switch on offline and hit save. All right, everything underpinning Google is their excellence in search and Google are absolutely the kings. The thing I love about working with Gmail online is I can search for any email in the full history of my Google account and pretty much instantly bring them up. If I say want to search for emails dating all the way back to 2010, which is 14 years ago, date 2010, there you go, immediately brings up all of those emails without even hesitating. Look at this one, best positions in bed, what could possibly be in there? Ah, that's the date search. Now, the other really cool thing that Gmail does is something called search stacking. And once you learn how to do this, you will never go back to the old search in Outlook or in MacMail. Now, I first start by typing somebody's name. So I'm going to type the name of a good friend of mine, Mr. Dal Beaumont, right? So I start typing their name and you can see here that their email address is automatically pre-filled, right? I just hit the tab button because it's using its AI automatically pre-filled that email address. But then I type in, let's say, for example, the word workshop. I'm going to put in a keyword, right? So I'm going to put in a, the keyword workshop and you'll see here, ta-da, any email between myself and my good friend Dale, mentioning the word workshop. Some of those go all the way back to 2013. It's instantly brought that up. And let me show you exactly how many emails Google has searched to find these emails. I'm gonna to go to my all mail folder, which shows me every single email that's come in and out of my business for the last 15 years. In the all mail folder, there is 630,000 emails. 630,000 emails. Yet Google can find an email from 15 years ago in half a second. It's insane. Google gives you the ability to find almost any email easily. And if I want to stretch the search a little bit further, I can always use the advanced search by clicking the button up the top here and putting in manual search parameters in different areas. And let me share something that's probably going to fry your noodle. If the search is this good, why do I need to bother with folders? Why would I ever bother filing my emails into folders when I can just search for emails from a particular person or a particular project or a particular date and find those emails instantly? So once you learn how to do a few of those little basics with search, your experience of Gmail completely, completely changes for the better. And I know that I can also do this on my mobile device as well using the Gmail app. Now, if you set up Gmail in the Apple Mail app, you should probably switch over to the dedicated Gmail app and use that as your default because you get access to all the same power here. And once I learned those few basics around search and how to manage the things in Gmail that the googly way of doing things like archiving instead of deleting emails so I can always search them if I want in the future or let's say adding an email to multiple labels which effectively tags it in multiple places. I never wanted to go back to Outlook or MacMail again because it just couldn't hold up a candle to Google. Some of the integrations into the rest of Google's ecosystem are absolutely stellar. Like if I go to send somebody an email and their out of office is switched on in their calendar it's going to let me know not to expect an email from that person because they're currently out of the office. And I love these features because Google are just making it easier to do work based on the context of everything happening in the Google Workspace account. If you liked this video, we've got plenty more on the channel covering this topic and much, much more.